Welcome back guys. In this lecture we're going to add screen navigation to our template. Screen navigation is an important aspect of the template because it allows the user of the application to jump directly to any of the application main screens independent of the screen that he or she is currently on. In our case we are going to have four main screens. A process overview screen, an alarm screen, a recipe screen and an HMI settings screen. We are going to add screen navigation to our template by following these four steps. First, we are going to create four graphic lists, one for each button. Each graphic list will contain one graphic for the inactive state of the button and a second graphic for the active state of the button. In our second step, we are going to create four local Boolean tags, one for each button. These tags will be used to define which graphic from the graphic list should be displayed for each button. In our third step, we are going to create our four main screens. Finally, in our last step, we are going to add and configure the four screen buttons on our template. So let's get started with our first step, creating graphic lists. To create a graphic list, we go to our tree structure and we double click on text and graphic lists. Here at the top we can choose between text lists and graphic lists. We are going to create graphic lists. We select add new and we are calling the graphic list for our process overview button graphic list button template overview. By using a descriptive name like this one it's clear that this is a graphic list for a template button in this case for the process overview. Now we add our graphics. We do this under graphic list entries. We are going to add two graphics, one for our inactive state and a second one for our active state. We define the value for our inactive state as zero and for our graphic, we select button template overview off from the library here, which contains all the custom graphics that we imported in a previous lecture. Our second entry has the value one and we select button template overview on for our active state. Now we do the same for the graphic lists of our three other template buttons. We start by copying the existing graphic list three times and we rename them according to our main screen buttons. Now we dive into each graphic list and change the graphics accordingly. So step one is finished. We have created four graphic lists, one for each button. In our second step, we are going to create four local Boolean tags, which will be used to define which graphic to display for each button. These four tags are only going to be used locally in the HMI. They are not connected to any PLC tags. So under HMI tags in the tree structure, we start by creating a new tag group called local tags. And under this local tags group, we create a new tag table called local template tags. Now we open the tag table and we create four Boolean tags here. I am starting my tag names with underscore here to indicate that these are local tags and I'm using X in front of the tag names to indicate that these are Boolean tags. For integers, I would use underscore I, for reals I would use underscore R, etc. The tag connections are by default set to internal tag, which means that these tags are local HMI tags. They are not synchronized to any PLC tags. In our third step, we're going to add four main screens to our application. One for process overview, one for alarms, one for recipe, and one for settings. Adding screens to an HMI application is done in the screens group here in the tree structure. One screen is already created here, so let's use this. We rename it to Overview and we open it. Under General Properties, 
we can choose to assign a template to the screen. Of course we are going to use our template, so we enter the name of our template, which is template. You can see now that our screen has received the template layout. So every time this screen will be active in runtime, all the features of our template will be available for the user. The next thing we need to do here is to assign a zero or one value to our local Boolean tag, depending on if the screen has been loaded or cleared. We are going to assign the value one to our tag if the user enters the screen and the value zero if the user exits the screen. We implement this feature as follows. On the overview screen, instead of going to properties, we are going to events. Here you can add a function for when the screen is loaded or cleared. The function we are going to add here under loaded is the setBit function, which we will use to set our Boolean tag to the value one. So we press on add function and we start typing setBit. As you can see, TI uses autocomplete, so it's very easy to find and assign functions. Alternatively, you can use this little downward arrow here on the right to get a list of all possible functions. Now we just need to assign our tag here and done. So when the screen is loaded, this event will set the Boolean tag to the value one. When we clear the screen, we need to write the value zero to that same tag. So we go to the cleared event and we start typing reset bit. Now we just assign our tag here. And that's it for this screen. Now we copy the screen three times for our recipes, alarms and settings screen. We start by renaming the screen names. Remember guys to use keyboard shortcuts as much as possible. They'll really save you a lot of time when building applications. Now we open our alarm screen and we adapt the loaded and cleared events with the state button alarm tag. Next up is our recipe screen. And finally, we make the necessary changes for our setting screen. Guys, our third step is finished. So far we have created four graphic lists and four local tags, and we added four main screens to the application. The final step of creating our screen navigation is adding four main screen buttons to our template. So let's start by opening our template again. We have allocated the area here on the right side of our screen layout for our screen navigation. Let's go and populate this area with our four main screen buttons. We start by deleting the placeholder, rectangle and text. We won't be needing those anymore. The first button that we're going to add here is going to be our process overview button, which will allow the user to jump to the process overview screen. To add a button to the template, we open the toolbox on the right and we drag and drop the button element to the template. Let's assign layer two, which is our graphics layer, to the button. And that's that. So this is a default button in TIA portal. It doesn't look too bad, but I think we can do much better. Don't you agree? Let's make this button our own and implement custom graphics instead of the TIA default color transition and text. To change the graphic settings of our button, we go to General. Instead of using the default text, we are going to use a graphic list. As mentioned before, by using a graphic list, we'll be able to show a different graphic for the button depending on the state of attack. We can assign a graphic list by selecting the graphic mode on the left here, and then selecting graphic list on the right. As you can see here, we need to assign a graphic list and a tag. As it happens to be, we have been very busy so far and we've already created these graphic lists and tags in our previous steps. So for the graphic list, we select our overview graphic list. And we select the corresponding tag. You can see that our button has taken over the zero value or inactive graphic of our graphic list. Personally, I prefer not to use any text on buttons. 
If you visualize buttons with icons that are clear to the user, then you don't need to use any text with your buttons. This maybe doesn't make a lot of difference if you only have a couple buttons in your application, but if you have, for example, an HMI application with hundreds of buttons running on machines in a dozen different countries with a dozen different languages, it starts to make a big difference. Minimizing the amount of text used in your HMI applications means less translations needed, and furthermore, less text on your screens looks cleaner and visually more appealing. Now that the correct graphic list and tag are assigned, we need to change the appearance a bit. As you can see, our button is stretched and not in the correct size yet. Under Appearance, we set the border width to zero. And under Layout, we select No Stretching of Graphic and more important, Fit Object to Content. Now the size of our button object has been adjusted to the size of our graphic bitmap. This only works, of course, if you create your custom graphics in the correct size, which I would really recommend that you do. The last thing we're going to change is the focus here under the Design tab. The focus of a button is a little rectangle that appears on the outline of a button when a user presses the button. We are not going to use focus for buttons in our application because, in my opinion, they look old-fashioned and our aim here is to make a modern-looking application. One small issue I have noticed in TIA Portal is that a focus rectangle will be shown in runtime even if you choose not to use the focus by setting the width to zero. To correct this small TIA issue, we are first going to set the color of our focus to our custom light gray color. Since our button graphic has the same custom light gray background color, we won't see the focus square when the button is pressed. Now we set the focus width to zero and we are done here. Our process overview button is almost finished, but we're not there yet. Now that we've assigned a graphic list and a tag to the button, and we've taken care of the appearance of the button, we need to add a function that will allow the user to jump to the process overview screen when the button is pressed. To implement this function, we start by going to events, and here you can see that we can add functions for different types of button interactions. We can add events for clicking, pressing, releasing, activating, deactivating, and changing the button. I've been using TIA Portal for over 10 years, and so far I've only used pressing and releasing events. Maybe you guys can think of scenarios to use the other button interactions. We are going to go with the default release event. Here we are going to add a function to activate a screen when we release the button, which basically means taking your finger away from the button after you've pressed it. We start typing activate screen, and we assign the screen overview to it. Now when we release the button after pressing it, the process overview screen will be loaded. Our first button is now finished. We just need to position it correctly now, which is very easy since we are using the snap to grid feature. So we drag the button and drop it here at the top right corner of our screen. One button finished, three buttons to go. The process of adding these next three buttons will go much faster since we've already done all the groundwork with our first button here. For our next three buttons, we start by copy-pasting the existing button three times. Now we are going to position each of those buttons underneath each other, starting just below our first button. As part of the modern design of this application, I would like the buttons to touch each other without any visible gap between them. Because we are using the layout mode Snap to Grid, there is still a little gap here between the button and the button above it. By using the up arrow button on the keyboard, we can precisely move the button upwards and close the gap. Now we do the same for the other two buttons. Now that we have all of our buttons positioned correctly, let's adapt the graphic list, tag, and release event for each of our three new buttons. The button below our overview screen button will be our alarm screen button. So we change the graphic list, the tag, and we go to the events and activate the alarm screen under the release event. Our next button is the recipe screen button, so same process here. We change the graphic list, 
the tag. And deactivate screen function of the release event. Finally, we have the setting screen button. We adapt the graphic list. The tag used together with the graphic list. And now we go to the events and adapt the function in the release event. That's it, guys. Time for a small celebration. We have successfully added screen navigation to our template. Before we conclude this lecture, let's quickly simulate the application and see if the screen navigation works. To simulate the application, we can either click on the icon right here in the toolbar, or we can just use the keyboard shortcut command Ctrl Shift X. Let's click on the icon, remember to select the device first, and see what happens. And there it is, our HMI application in all its glory. You can see our screen navigation right here, and by clicking on the different screen buttons, we navigate between the different screens. At the moment, all of our screens still look the same, because we haven't added any screen-specific content yet. But don't despair, we are going to use this simulation quite a lot in the coming lectures, and with more screen-specific content added throughout the course, the simulation will start to look more and more like a real HMI application. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you're getting more and more excited about building this application now that we're really starting to see some progress here by adding a screen navigation. In the next activity, you get to create a template, allocate space for the different areas of the template, and add a screen navigation. So roll up your sleeves and let's get this template up and running.